You are listening to Improv Radio. Oh, yeah! Hello, and welcome to another episode of Improv Radio, your source for breaking news. I am one of your hosts, Reese Davis, and with me, as always from now on, is... Is <laughs> it me? Me? I am here as well. Um, ben Bywater. And it's a pleasure. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here. So thank you again, Reese. Uh, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and we've got on some guests today as well. Um, so me and Reese have both invited along a guest today. So Reese, do you want to introduce the uh, the lady sat to your left today? Um, and uh, well, and I'm sure she can introduce herself. Okay, uh, this is Jemima Pajima. Uh, actually, it's Pajima. Uh, Jemima Pajima, and she works. I work in the Natural History Museum in London. Okay, so I think uh, she's going to have a lot to tell us today. Who did you yeah, bring along, Ben? Very, very interesting. Um, I have invited along Mr. Chris Diabetes. Uh, so, Chris, if you want to uh, introduce yourself and tell tell the listeners what you do. <coughs> right. Um, <coughs> hello. Um, my name's Chris Diabetes. Um, I've just released my new um, healthy cooking guide, uh, available in all good bookshops now. Are you alright, Chris? Yeah, I am, yes. You sound like you've just been for a run or something. No, um, no, I, I don't actually believe in running, Reese. I think it's bad for the soul. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> uh, Brilliant. Yeah. Okay, so Jemima, you uh, made quite the discovery recently uh, in the Natural History Museum, didn't you? Uh, yes, I did actually. Um, well, when I first started working at the Natural History Museum about 24 years ago, uh, I, I could only ever find the men's loos. So um, I, I've been using them for 24 years. Uh, and it's because the men's loos are over next to the paleontology exhibit where I work. And I'd never thought to venture over to the rest of the museum. You see, I'm not that interested in history. Uh, but one day I decided, why not? I'll take a look around. And <laughs> I discovered the woman's toilets. So uh, now people don't stare at me so much. Right. Um, okay. I mean, Jemima, you say you, you've worked there for 24 years. That's correct, yes. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, and, and yet you'd never actually left the paleontology department. No, uh, we have our own staff entrance. Uh, as I say, I'm not, I'm not overly bothered by history, so it, it just never occurred to me to take a look around. Right. I mean, are you, are you, what, what's your interest in? in I mean, I assume presumably you have an interest in paleontology. Ah, uh, well, have you ever seen that film, uh, uh, Pete's Dragon? <laughs> I, I honestly can't say I have, actually, I'm afraid. It's about this cartoon dragon, and he's, he, he lives in the real world, and he makes a friend uh, called Pete. Uh, and, <laughs> right. And they have an adventure together. Right, I see. Uh, I mean, I, I would say sort of um, uh, fascinating. I mean, I would say, Jemima, that's not necessarily strictly relevant to... Either dinosaurs well, or the Natural History Museum. Well, dragons, dinosaurs, in in Western culture, it's not that different. Uh, so I, I when I was younger, I wanted to find a dragon uh, because oh okay yeah they were in the movies. I was sure they existed. And then yeah, as I got sure. older, of course I know dragons are not real. Um, of course, but I don't know. I I somehow I still have that bit of hope inside me right no i i, I can understand that i so do you, not give you know, a shit about dinosaurs though <laughs> right okay i right good uh well um so reese like um like normal you've uh, found yourself a um a sort of a news story uh, perhaps a lesser covered news story of the um i was gonna say week not necessarily weak, but generally a lesser-covered news story. 
Um, do you want to share what you've got this uh, this episode? Sure. So I found this news story. It was on UPI.com, which I've never heard of. Uh, it's called... Uh, no, I haven't come across that one. <laughs> the headline is Slovakian woman arrested for playing the same opera song for 16 years. So... <laughs> right. So this this woman, she's been playing the same song. It's... Uh, uh, it's in Italian. Uh, La Traviata uh, by Giuseppe Verdi. Uh, she's been okay. playing that on repeat for 16 years and it was to drown out the noise of the neighbour's barking dog. Uh, Not to, hang on. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. I, I, dogs barking can be annoying, particularly if you don't have dogs. I understand that. <laughs> but surely repeating the same song for 16 years is also annoying. Also, is the article suggesting that the dogs were barking non-stop for 16 years? No, I think it's suggesting that this woman is a lunatic, actually. <laughs> I mean, that's... <laughs> yeah. I don't want to say yeah, but I'm inclined to agree, yeah. So, um... <laughs> so this woman faces up to six months in jail if she's found guilty. Hey, really? So what's she been arrested for? Like, presumably, like, you must be general rather than specifically this case. Um, oh, it does say. Um, my apologies. Oh, uh, she's being charged with harassment and malicious persecution. Right, okay. I, I'm a bit confused by it, if I'm, if I'm perfectly honest. <laughs> Okay, right, good. Um, well, Jemima, um, do you yes. have a an interest in? I mean, what what are you? Well, first of all, do you have any sort of general thoughts on the story? And second of all, I mean, you, I, I'm told you've got quite an interest in opera music yourself. Um, and actually, a few uh, years ago, you tried to implement a widespread. Um, opera sound system in the Natural History Museum, so maybe you could elaborate on that a little bit as well. Uh, sure, okay, I'll start with the opera. Uh, so, after about five or six years, I started to get more comfortable, started to feel like maybe I could make some changes in the So museum. I guess this was, yeah, yeah, so that would have been, what, the turn of the millennium, isn't it? Uh, um, yeah, but that would be about right. Yeah. Um, and, oh, we get these chavs in all the time. They, because the Natural History Museum is free these days, so these chefs come in, yeah. they just ha I, hang around by the T-Rex skeleton, uh, skeleton. If I could just yeah. point, point out to our, to our listeners quickly, Jemima, do you want to make it abundantly clear that the Natural History Museum has always been free? That's not a recent thing. Okay. But <laughs> go on. <laughs> uh, so these chefs come in and they're hanging out with the T-Rex skeleton, really disrespecting okay it. uh what what were they doing what were they doing they're just climbing it drinking their cows <laughs> oh wow uh, oh wow making God. it smoke cigarettes it, it can it well, for one it's a dinosaur nicotine uh i believe is um poisonous to reptiles it, it, uh yeah another thing uh the t-rex is dead so can't possibly enjoy uh <laughs> the rush it would otherwise get famously a fossil sure yes uh, uh, so they're disrespecting this T-Rex and one day uh, the ass bone went missing <laughs> okay <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> okay so, so Jemima if I, if I can if I can set the scene okay so, yes. so it's the turn of the millennium. So it's like, like roughly 1999, 2000, around that time. Um, some chavs, I guess, you know, maybe that wasn't the language being used at the time, but some chavs have stolen the, <laughs> um, direct quote, <laughs> ass bone of the T-Rex that you're supposed to be looking after in the <laughs> paleontology section of the Natural History Museum, right? Yes. Okay, so... I mean, obviously, a major, major drama. Did I you mean. ever get the ass bone back? Um, actually, it did return. Um, but it was... It had been graffitied on. Oh, my goodness. Yes. 
Wow, that, I, that is awful. What? Genuinely, I, I mean, I, I've been to the Natural History Museum. <laughs> um, I mean, what did you... Look, I've, I've seen the, the T-Rex, is why I'm driving around, I wasn't just showing off. Um, okay. I mean, obviously, it's, um, you know, not evidently been tampered with, been disrespected, been vandalised in any way. Um, so what, I mean, what happened next? Uh, so what happened, we actually got this package in the mail. Uh, mm. And it was to the paleontology department, so I opened it. Mm. And it was the ass bone, which had been missing for, I, th- I think, about four months at the time. Oh, wow, gosh. So we were very lucky to get it back. We thought it was gone. Yeah, forever. absolutely. Well, yeah, of course. Well, you would, wouldn't you? Of course. That's. I mean, well, thank goodness you got it back. The the, um, the problem is, um, I was trying to get it back secretly. So, um, in the meantime, after it was stolen, I put a toilet seat in there, a white porcelain toilet seat, just not to raise any suspicion. Um, right. So, 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 normally where the femur I assume would be on the T-Rex skeleton you'd placed a toilet where where the ass bone is yes (laughs) yeah Um, you see uh, I was largely blamed for these uh, chavs messing around with the T-Rex that that seems that seems incredibly unjust um, Jemima I mean you know obviously you were sort of looking after the the area but I mean if there was a a gang of, of youths coming in wrecking havoc I, you know personally I, I don't see what you could have done I mean without putting your own life in danger I mean why why were you blamed it well because I wanted to get some new people in to see the exhibits because yeah, that's very noble if the department is popular then we get a little bit of a bonus um, okay a little less noble I <laughs> widening minds sure so I uh, posted about it on MySpace um, and my friend Tom was Did coming, you? and um, he he started to spread lies on the event page. So he was oh, saying wow. that it's going to be a, a wicked rager. Uh, bring your own booze. Oh, oh, uh, hang on, hang on. Um, can I just ask, wh- when was this? Uh, about uh, well, uh, about New Year's two thousand. Uh, New Year 2000? Yes. Well, the turn of mal- the millennium. Oh, uh, n- 99? Yes. Uh, are you... Are you... Are you crazy Jemima? The, I, I... I went to that rave. Oh. Uh, oh. Um... Oh. So, what... Do you remember much about it? Oh, it was an absolute mad one, lads. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, Turn of century. Turn, turn of millennium. 99, um, I went there down down with a couple of lads, an absolute bender, uh, we, <laughs> funny story actually, we're in this room right, loads of bones and that, and they may think it'd be well funny to, to nick a bone from this like big lizard thing, Wow. so we're all chucking it around and that, and then yeah it was a mad one, off my tits man. You were chucking it around? Hang on. Right, let me get this straight. So, so Chris, you went to a rave at the Natural History Museum, <laughs> but but Jemima, you'd sort of accidentally invited a large amount of people to. Well, it wasn't. My uh, connections on MySpace, they were all uh, professional connections. You know, people who are in the museum industry. Um, so I was expecting that kind of clientele. But you know, this uh, this. Uh, friend Tom, who, he's a yeah, he's Tommy a, Mad Boy. Tommy Mad Boy, I guess you call him. That's what we call him. He, yeah, Tommy Mad Boy. You know he's everybody's friend on MySpace, so automatically he's invited when you click uh, invite all friends. And it was largely him who um, created this rave. Right, how many people were invited to this rave? Um, originally around twelve uh, to the event. Right. And then Tom got a hold of it, and it turned into 12 million. <laughs> wow, right. can that many people even fit in the museum? Uh, no. 
oh, oh, oh yeah no it was absolutely jam packed Reese. and people were like bouncing off the walls and that it was all mental man it was well well good you should have been there oh well actually at that time I was about six so yeah I too was six so <laughs> probably wouldn't have gone but okay um that's crazy. So do you? So I genuinely, I'm shocked. I I really don't have anything else to say. I mean, this is a crazy story. First of all, incredibly impressed that you got the the ass phone back, Jemima. Yes. Thirdly, Chris, you were at that rave. I mean, that is small world. It's quite I guess. a coincidence. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Jemima, I mean. What? I mean, so you said that four months later you managed to get the femur back, the ass bone back. Um, what happened next? Oh, well, okay, so the graffiti, I think I was talking about. Um, mm. The graffiti. Someone, yeah, I, guess, I guess it must have been some kind of child, but they wrote the word cock on the ass bone. <laughs> yeah. But they spelt it wrong. Uh, it was. Right. Uh, let me see if I can remember correctly. <laughs> Uh, it was C O C C Y X. I had never seen cock spot like that. It certainly wasn't a cock bone, because that was still there. <laughs> Hang on, right? So, so the fossil had written on it when returned to you, cock six. Uh, well, cock, but it, it was it was spelled wrong. Cox. Well, Maybe. I think- Maybe you could pronounce it like that, but that's not not English, is it? That doesn't look like English. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong, Reese. Um, yeah. But I'm fairly certain that Coxis Coxix is the name of the bone, which would be in, I guess, the ass area. Yeah. Actually, that's the tailbone. Yeah. Oh. I. Are we sure it was graffiti, Jemima? Well. It was interesting graffiti because it came on a label, and it was right. printed. And uh, actually, my boss's signature was on it. Okay, so it sounds like that was always there, Jemima. Um. Okay, so right. Okay, well, good, good conversation. Uh, um, I also found a new story. Yeah, go ahead. So, shall we move on? Let's do it. Um, yeah. Uh, so, um, right. So, this is... To be honest, it's actually a few months ago now. Some of the listeners might well have heard of it. But I thought it was such a good news story that I wanted to share it and talk uh, talk to, to the guests we've got in today about it. Okay. So, this uh, a few months ago, a man in America is going to launch a homemade rocket into space. Right. And the reason he's doing that is to prove that the Earth is flat. There are probably... uh, There are easier ways to do that, right? A lot going on in that story, I think. Yeah, I mean, believing the vast majority of the world's scientists would be an easier way to do it, wouldn't it? Wasn't there this guy? He climbed Mount Everest and he posted a photo that showed the curvature of the Earth. Uh, I yeah, think probably. that was largely doctored. Oh, do you? Ah, so Jemima, do you, what, what are your thoughts on this? Well, you know, I don't really buy into the whole flat earth thing. It's a bit okay. bizarre for me. But um, mm. I, I think that if you climb a mountain, you're not going to see very much. There would certainly be clouds in the way. Yeah, okay. I can right. sort of get on board yeah, with that. I've... I be, think there often is. There's going to be breaks in the cloud, though. Well, that's your opinion. Well, I, I don't necessarily... Like, I think Reese has got quite... I mean, I don't think that's an opinion, per se. I think that's a provable fact. No, uh, Ben, you're confusing facts and opinions. Okay. Uh, but th- there are many, many ways that you can prove the world is round or, or flat, I suppose, if it was. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I think that's the main the main thing, isn't it? Like a effect, like a horizon. A horizon is 
proof that the world is round. It proves there's a curvature. If there's curvature, it must, you know, it's not flat effectively, is it? Um, so I guess that's the main, like the fact that the sun can set, the fact that if you look out across the sea, there's clearly an end. Um, so I, yeah, I agree. But this guy, <laughs> effectively, he's going to launch. In fact, you know what? I think he might have now launched I, his shuttle. I am looking at an update on it now, Ben. And it says that I, a flat earther finally tried to fly away and his rocket didn't even ignite. Oh, <laughs> you know what? I <laughs> So I was thinking about this. And obviously, there's a lot to take out of this story. Yeah. So obviously, there's a few different elements going on here. Um First of all, like, part of me, I mean, there is a little bit of begrudging respect for this man. Yeah, I mean, he's willing to go, well, it's all out of curiosity, isn't it, really? Out of trying to learn Yeah, exactly. All. And he's a little bit exactly. bad judgment, Like I, he's doing all right. Yeah, yeah, like, you can, you can sort of think he's wrong in what he's trying to prove, because it's categorically, factually wrong, like the Earth is round. <laughs> <laughs> but but the fact that he's decided this and he's set out to prove it you know he's in you know surely if nothing else that's what science is all about is about proving something one way or another you know um and he did say uh, it's, it's not a direct quote but to paraphrase him he did say if he took a picture and it was round like he would admit defeat oh so he's, he is a scientist so yeah, yeah, effectively, and he's got a proper um, scientist name as well, Mad Mike Hughes. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know. Oh Ben, I some people go with doctor. <laughs> I found another update. Actually, he has uh, propelled himself about one thousand eight hundred and seventy-five feet into the air. Okay, uh, it's not. It's not breaking the Earth's. No, I don't know how high he'd have to go up it. for that, but. I think, I think it's around sixty thousand feet. So is where like technical space begins. A little bit off, maybe high enough to see curvature though. Could it maybe. be? I, I'm. I can't really picture that to be honest. I can't. How tall? How tall is fast? I don't think. Well, maybe. Maybe it would be. You can on some tall buildings. You can see the curvature of the Earth. Um. Yeah, because you have these buildings in Dubai that break through the clouds, so you must be able yeah. to. Actually, yeah, yeah. saying that, any time you've been on a plane. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's sort of where this whole thing falls flat, isn't it, really? But does... <laughs> can you prove it without actually going to space, though? Because I suppose when you look out of a plane window, you are seeing curvature... But you could also argue that you're just seeing it as a sort of 2D circle rather than a sphere because you can't see over that uh, angle. Yeah, sure. I think that's generally the argument, isn't it? Like it could be refraction of light, etc. Like you can't prove that it's round. You can't prove it's not necessarily flat, just more that there is a curve there. Yeah. Um, it takes a lot of disbelief in science and in NASA especially who post these photos all the time. Yeah, but a lot of the photos are not 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 false, but they are sort of doctored. Yeah, it, maybe so. Okay, so that the to, public like them more. Yeah, exactly. So they're a bit more vibrant. So, but yeah, so that's the news story that I've found. So, it's it's a weird one, isn't it? Yeah. So do they think? Um, so you can see the moon and you can see the sun and. You know, if you have a telescope or something, you can see Mars and all that. You can see that they're spheres. So is Earth the only one that's not? I honestly don't know. I, like, I don't know the thought process. No. Uh, I assume so. Chris, you were briefly on the Flat Earth Society's uh, Facebook page as an admin. Do you believe all this? Yeah, that's right. Um, well, yes, well, yeah, yeah, I do. Um... I would say, I mean, I, I was on Flat Earth Society, yes. Um, I was an admin for them. Um, the reason I stopped is 
Um, well, I'll tell you a story, right? Okay. So when I was growing up, um, I thought Earth were flat because I couldn't, I had never seen, um, you know, I hadn't seen Earth from outside um, Earth, right? Yeah. So, so I thought it might be flat. So I, you know, I, I sort of thought, right, these people I met had quite a good argument for it. Um, they said, how do you know it's not flat? I said, well, I don't. They said, well, exactly. So, okay. so I used to hold um, for a while. I held, I held the black one in uh, the, the Blackpool and Darwin uh, flat Earth Society. Um, now, basically, the reason that I stopped being sort of president of that society and had been on the Facebook page is that I, I mean, it was uh, two thousand and three, I think, February, and uh, basically. Um, I, I threw a big old, uh, big old bash right at uh, Blackpool Pleasure, Pleasure Amusement Arcade. Right. Um, right. The thing is, oh, I, uh, I put it, I sent around an email chain, and, and got all my friends not to, to send it round. And the thing is, a lot of people came over right from uh, from all around the world. Um, so we were sort of having a look, having a chat. Oh, uh, um, I, I think I was there. Oh, yeah, in, oh, right. in Blackpool, Pleasure Beach, yes? Blackpool, Pleasure Beach, the amusement arcade, February 2003. Yes, uh, I was trying out roller skates for the first time in Blackpool, and <laughs> uh, I sort of tripped and fell on this escalator, and it was... Have you ever seen uh, Hot Rod when he falls down that hill for about two minutes straight? <coughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's that in real life, and I ended up in Pleasure Beach surrounded by all these topless chaps. Oh, that were our barbecue, February barbecue. Ah. Yeah, you have to go topless because you're near barbecue, so, um, you know, don't want to get fat on the shirt, basically. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, um, so, yeah, so, so basically, um, we're, we're chatting, so I was chatting to this, this couple from Australia, um, and I, I, I never met someone from Australia. Um, so at first I just thought they were being a bit odd like but uh, I got chatting to them and I didn't really know where Australia was so we went to this bookshop right and they had a globe there um, and they showed me where they were and how they'd got the flight around the earth right? Um, and showed me some pictures of them in plane and you could see curve so sort of uh, ch changed my mind that a bit. And this was sort of mid-party as well? Yeah. I bet that put a downer on the day. No, not really, to be honest, Reese. I uh, I did what I think anyone would do in that situation. I had a hot dog. I had a uh, cider. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, is, it, is it you, uh, Chris Diabetes, that uh, when you were running the... Uh, Flat Earth Society Facebook page. You actually came up with a, with a theme tune. For that it. is correct. Yeah. I I didn't know that. Um, ben, can we find that? Uh, yeah, I think. Um, in fact, I tell you what, uh, Chris. Yeah. Do you? Um, I I'm, I've just looked on our system. We don't have it. But Chris, um, do you do you remember it? Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> Shall we... Do you want to have a, a live rendition? Yeah, would you mind? Can we do that in the studio? Why not? Yeah. Okay. Alright, um... Go ahead. I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna go set up um, some of the stuff we need for it. Um, Jemima, why don't you tell us a little bit more about sort of what happened when you accidentally, I guess, gate-crashed Chris's party. Uh, sure. So, actually, I was out with my daughter. Uh, she was about four at the time. I was teaching her to roller skate, obviously doing a very bad job of this. And, yes, I fell. I fell up an escalator. I just kept rolling because, you know, roller skates. And also, I had them on my arms, too, and my stomach. Uh, so, I just kept rolling and rolling, and I ended Sorry, up... Can I... 
Yeah. Sorry, I was, no, just, I was just going to say, Jemima, can I just ask, why did you have the roller skates on your arms? In, and Well, really everywhere except for your feet. In, in case I fell over. Right, okay, fair enough, sure. Uh, yeah, so I ended up there. I lost my daughter, actually. I was surrounded by these uh, chubby, uh, topless chaps. Um, got uh, sorry, can I... We, we weren't... I mean, you know, we're not chaps, right? We were, we were, you know, barbecuing members of the Flat Earth Society, Blackpool and Darlington. Right. Well, I ended up there, and um, I, I couldn't find my daughter anyway. Uh, so I was asking around and uh, nobody seemed to know and then I saw someone down on the beach so I I wandered over it was a little girl she was waving it was my daughter it's it's not an exciting story that's why I didn't want to talk about it <laughs> okay that's sure okay well I mean it's not the most exciting but it's quite interesting that um, but you took her there to go to go rollerblading um, Chris, uh, we've set up everything you need for the uh, for the rendition. Um, so, so when 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 was this jingle active? I suppose. Uh, right. Well, um, I uh, I became president um, of of the society uh, for Blackpool in uh, ninety eight, um, but I I wrote this jingle in ninety nine um, for the for the. Uh, for the well, it was later used as a Facebook group, but originally it was one we sent round on an email blockchain. Um, but it went a little bit like this. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so it so I went a little bit like this then. <laughs> If you think the earth is flat, welcome to our club. Oh, Ben, I've heard you uh, humming this around the office. Why don't you join in? Yeah. Okay. Well, should we, uh, Chris, if you don't mind, can we harmonise? Yeah, I don't see why not. Because it's in the full version about a minute long. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Um, So... Uh, can can you still hear me on the mic? I'm conscious that we've where the where we've set it up is a bit further away. You sound fine, Ben. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, um, so me and Chris will harmonise it. If you like to think the flat Earth is real, welcome to our club. And if you like to know. That we've got members all over the globe. Welcome to our club. And if you like penguin biscuit bars, welcome to our. No, hang on, not that. Uh, hang on. Um, and if you like to meet up with people, welcome to our club. And if you like to argue with people, welcome to our club. And if you like to discuss the ending of the tyrannical people who run NASA and think that they can control the entirety of the space industry and think that they can turn everything we've tried to find out real, welcome to our club. Wow, that was fantastic. <laughs> I haven't heard a song like that in years. Well done, boys. Thanks. Uh, sorry, I was just That's getting okay. the uh, helping helping the editor move the uh, move the piano out <laughs> of the way. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Jemima, can you move us on? You yourself have found a weird story, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, why don't you tell us about it? Okay, so uh, I was reading The Mirror, uh, which is a highly respected newspaper, and I encourage everybody to solely read from that news source. Uh, Other newspapers are available. Uh, Mum thinks her house might be haunted by a spunking ghost. Wow. A what what ghost? A spunking ghost. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, right, why does this woman think that? Yeah, good question. Uh, well, she says she woke up in the middle of the night and noticed a dark shape move out of the corner of her eye. Okay, that's scary. That's creepy. Uh, she says that, uh, well, this is a direct quote. Last night, my partner woke up around 1am because he heard our bedroom door open. Uh, he didn't get up because he expected our son to tap him on the shoulder, announcing he had he had had a bad dream, but nothing. And then the bedroom door closed. So, uh, her husband got out of bed, went to check on the son uh, to see if he was awake, uh, and he stepped in a large wet patch. And he checked on the son; the son was asleep. Checked downstairs; the dog was asleep. Uh, so then he went back to bed. And okay. yeah, she so, she thinks it's a spunking ghost. So what? Why does she think spunking? Does it say? Uh, no, it's it's an interesting uh, uh, fluid to choose because it could be anything. It, I mean, yeah, like presumably, you know, because of the puddle. But uh, why would you instantly assume two things? <laughs> why you'd instantly assume it was spunk, and why you'd instantly assume it was a ghost? Uh, I I don't know this woman personally, and she doesn't uh, explain that part. She doesn't know. That's yeah, yeah, she, it, yeah. It could be. It doesn't even have to be a body fluid. It could be like a leak in the. It probably was a leak in the roof. I, the cynic in me, would suggest, <laughs> would suggest that they have a leak, and the husband was quite sleepy. The, the 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 sort of fox molder in me thinks that it's possible that they had a break in. The what? The fox molder? Yeah, from X Files. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, uh, <laughs> thinks they might have had a break in. No part of me, not a single part of me, thinks that they have a spunking ghost. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, but it could be. Have you seen a ghost? Yes, yeah. Go on. Right, so... Um, this was in, I don't know, 2007, maybe. Um, I'd just come back from uh, from seeing Adler Levine's Comeback Tour. Okay. Amazing show, actually. She's uh, got a lot of... Uh, a lot of wits about her. Right, so just going back from that. Uh, sort of, I think it were about December, maybe January time. Just going back from that, right. Stumbling around, right. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'd had a few, okay. I mean, I think it's impossible to go and see, frankly, the pop sensation that is Avila Ravine without first downing a few tinnies on the tree. Okay. And had a few, right. Stumbling back to my gaff. My house, that is. And uh, at the corner of my eye, right, I see this figure, completely white, okay? He's got a little scarf on, <laughs> like that. And he had these big black eyes. And I don't know why you're laughing, to be honest, Reese. He had these big black eyes, and they were piercing straight at me, straight through my soul. I'm, I'm going to be honest, I didn't stick around to see what he wanted from me. So the reason right, uh, but... the reason I laughed is because you said he had this little scarf on. Uh, so I'm just imagining this flamboyant ghost. No, it, it wasn't like that. It was like a, you know, like a woolen, woolen scarf. It looked like a menace he did. Like one you might get from uh, New Look. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, I guess that sort of thing, yeah. I mean, but he was old and tatty. So, and, so, and, so uh, what was back? Ben, you know Victorian stuff. What were the clove shops back then? Well, I, uh, Marks and Spencer's. Yeah, was it, maybe, was it from Marks I and Spencer's? I, I don't know where because the scarf maybe, was from, all right? Maybe we can put a call out if other people have seen it, if you know where the scarf was from. So just have a think. Well, I, right, so, right, well, I don't know. I mean, it were, well, I mean the scarf on, were brown. Hang on. I've got Ben's right, vintage collection. His, well, hang on. 
I've got Ben's vintage collection of Max and Spencer's catalogues here. So, okay, uh, did this ghost look Victorian, or from what sort of time? Right, well, okay, so, all I could see of him, it was this tubby lad, right? Oh, okay. Big tubby lad. D did he look rich? Okay. He had, he had a big belly. He were all white. Did he, did he look right. rich? He, I don't, well, I, I, I don't know. Uh, to be honest with you, I think you would all know. I really saw. I think you would know well, if the ghost looked rich. So if he's fat and uh, just one of the common folk, it's got to be one of the later, maybe late Victorian era. You reckon, Ben? Yeah, possibly. So yeah. Only, only rich people were fat back then. Uh, okay. So uh, here's this one from the late Victorian era. Um, I'm just going to open it up to the scarf section. Um, c can you see the scarf here? Can you uh, point it out for us? Uh, it looks a bit like that one, I guess. It was this one! Okay, definitely, because we're going to put the call out, probably let the police know. Uh, well, I, I don't You're know. You're saying it's yeah, definitely I mean, this one. Okay, can you circle that, Ben? It could have been, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll do. All right, um, and what else can you okay. tell us? Big black eyes. Yeah, so... Is that not... He were bald. Can we, can we say that, though? Uh, yes, they were looking. Are you sh Are you sure? Because completely black. Okay. Black, big, dark eyes looking right through me. So okay, I'm just gonna write a compo draw a composite image here. It's got big black eyes. But we have this um, flamboyant scar. Yeah, so we had, Okay. He had a big round head. How big? I, I don't. No, I, come on. You know, big circular. No, like how head. many centimeters, inches? I don't. I guess. Give us an answer. About eight, eight inches. Eight inches. Is that circumference, yeah. diameter? Well, both. It were completely round. Okay. And and then he had a big belly underneath, and I guess that were, I don't know, maybe 16 inches or so. Si also com a, completely a, round. A big belly that's 16 inches? Yeah. Because I'm a 32-inch waist, so are you sure about that? Do you know how big an inch well, is, mate? <laughs> I guess well, it might have been bigger at 40 I would inch, imagine, because if he's 16 inch and an adult. Right. right. Hang on. I, yeah, this is a bit of a confusing story, I think it, to be yeah, honest, yeah, tell him Phipps, I think. I don't think we should be putting in a police report if you can't get your facts straight. No, I'm telling you what he was. You like. just said he had a 16 inch waist, which is obviously right. BS. <laughs> clearly, clearly not true. Clearly not true. So he, right. So he had a he had a completely round head. I struggle to believe that, frankly. Yeah, that's not realistic. Not that Did he have a chin? Round. He must have had a chin. No, he didn't have a chin no, or a neck. He didn't have a chin or a neck. <coughs> Was he a Mr. Man? Did he have a torso? Right. He, yeah, he had belly and torso together, big round circle. So it sounds like a snowman to me. Were you was it a snowman? With a scar? Hang on. And black eyes like charcoal. Right. What? What was the? What was the month? It was December. Was there just a snowman right. in your garden? We were, were you looking at a snowman? <coughs> um. <laughs> to me, that yeah, that sounds well, like a snowman to me. Yeah. I mean, it. Yeah. Sounds very much like a snowman. Yeah, right. well, I, I suppose, I mean, <laughs> looking back, it might have been a snowman, yes. It, it might have been, or it definitely was, because we're still possibly going to put this police report in, and we need, I think we it, need straight facts. I think it, no, don't I think, think it prob just tell probably, us. I mean, it was. It, wa it was yeah. a snowman. Do you want us to put right, the it was a report in? No, not really. No. no, please stop wasting our time. No. Yeah. That was 11 years ago. What you're saying is 11 years ago you saw a snowman. That was about five minutes of podcast time. W that wasn't an interesting story. No, that right. was pointless, Rubbish, frankly. Yeah. Let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah, definitely. Um, right, well, fortunately, um, I've got quite a good story here, so we'll move on to that. Uh, okay, so, this, uh, again, is in America. All of my stories are from America, apparently. Okay. And this is in Texas. Oh. A calf has been born looking like uh, Gene Simmons, the <laughs> rock star from Kiss. <laughs> okay? So, 
He's got, like, how Gene Simmons used to be in Kiss, that face makeup. There's a calf that's been born that looks exactly like Ah, that. I was picturing him without the makeup. <laughs> I imagine. No, it is. Yeah, it's with the makeup. Okay, is that, is that what the similarity is? Just the makeup? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, to be fair, I probably not really like Gene Simmons, but like Gene Simmons' character oh, okay. in. So Kiss. Gene Simmons hasn't okay. been hanging around the meadow. I get well, into all sorts of trouble. I. I would say we probably have to say that that is completely unsubstantiated. Well, we don't know that, Ben, because it could be true. So we just have to say the words... Um, right. Allegedly, allegedly. Gene Simmons has not been hang, hanging around. Allegedly. It's, because we don't it's know. Likely, it's likely that he's not involved. Possibly. But... It's possible. It's, it's, not it's not unproven. I don't think it's been investigated, but it's not unproven. <laughs> so, um, um, is there any more to this story? That had they named the cow Gene Simmons? I, I'm just looking at it now. <clears throat> um, they haven't, which is quite. Well, that's dark. It's sad, isn't it? Like quite. That could be really. a tourist attraction. We could put that. that yeah, we could put that it, in the Natural History Museum. Where was it again, Ben? It's in Texas. Oh, that's quite a far way. Yeah, could it go in the Natural History Museum? Um, I suppose maybe if we killed it first. I think there's a section on animals. In fact, yes, there is a section on animals. So maybe. Maybe. You know what? I'll, Maybe. I'll put in a call. Uh, yeah. Are you? Oh, you're doing it now. Uh, yes, I am. Just give me one moment. I just need to find the number for the curator. Um. Okay. So, is there any more to this story, Ben? <laughs> to be honest, not really. <laughs> it's mostly the title and the picture, the accompanying <laughs> picture. This this casting board. No one really knows why. Um. Because it, the thing is, the other cows there aren't, don't really have any like facial marks. Oh. So all the other cows there, from what I can see, all the other cows there are like I'm black or brown. Um, whereas this one is white with this these black spots that make it look like it's a member of the band Kiss. Okay. And does it look like that to you? Does it look like the band member? It does, yeah. You know what I'll do? I'll um, I'll send the picture over and we can add it on. Okay. Perhaps yeah, at some yeah. point. And and if you're if you're listening, let us know. Let us know what you think. I think it like genuinely is pretty close. Like, given it's a cow, it's pretty close. <laughs> okay, we'll put that in the YouTube video. If you're listening elsewhere, to, um, well, screw you. Okay. If you're listening, if you're listening elsewhere, search it. I mean, it's going to be the first thing that comes up. Isn't yeah, it? that's what I should have said. Uh, <laughs> okay, how are you getting along with that, uh, Jemima? Uh, okay, I've got the number. I'm just. I'm, hello. Yes, hello. This is uh, Jemima Pajima from uh, oh, Paleontology. Mrs. Pajima. Yes, that's me. Um. Listen, I'm just on a podcast right now, so I may have to keep it brief. Um, mm. We have um, just learned about this cow, and its uh, it looks like it's wearing Kiss makeup. You know the band Kiss? I do. It, it looks looks a lot like Gene Simmons. Oh. Um, so I was wondering if it was maybe something we could get to the museum. Hmm. I... I think it probably is. Uh, okay. Well, I don't know that much about it, so I'll pass you over to Ben. Oh, uh, hello. Hello. Um, hi. It's, uh, it's Ben here on Improv Radio. Of. Um, yeah, it was just a news story that I've just been telling Jemima um, and the listeners about. Um, there's this cow being born in Texas in the United States. Uh, it looks surprisingly like the 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 rocker from Kiss, Gene Simmons. Um, do you mind me? I thought it might be something that might be of interest to the Natural History Museum. Oh, it is. It is. Yes. Oi! Do you want a cup of tea, mate? 
<laughs> oh, you'll have to excuse me, my my young my my young servant boy, <laughs> little little Erasmus is coming oh. here. Uh, I say, Erasmus, come here. Uh, uh, okay. Ow! <laughs> Don't, why? Don't hit me. <laughs> oh, oh yes, uh, Erasmus. What do you think of cats? Uh, 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 they're be uh, beautiful. <laughs> Yes. What would you say to a cow in the Natural History Museum? Are, are you trying not to pay me again? Trying to not pay me? <laughs> oh, Erasmus. I are not paid. Uh, yeah, okay. A cow sounds great. Oh, wonderful. And yes, I want some more tea. Uh. <laughs> yes, tell Jemima that I would be delighted to make this cow's acquaintance. Brilliant. All right. Um, I will do. Wonderful to speak to you. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. That was. That... Uh, hey, you know what? I've just realised. <laughs> yeah. Um, just like last episode, that was actually another world exclusive. Uh, yeah, I suppose it is. We already know about the upcoming purchase of this Gene Simmons cow for the Natural History yeah, Museum. Yeah, if you if you go to the Natural His History Museum in I'm in six months, maybe a year, I don't know, um, and do you see a cow that looks like Gene Simmons? Now you know why. Take a photo with it. Send it to us to one of our Twitters. Yeah, de definitely. We'll be well pleased. Yes. Yeah, wicked. <laughs> um, so, um, Chris, I notice you've got your hand up. <laughs> um, <laughs> not strictly necessary, but, you know, it would be rude of me not to let you uh, have a word. So what were you going to ask? Sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, I was just going to say, um, Jemima... Yes. Um, I, I just... I, I, I realise that as we've been speaking over the course of this podcast, um, qu quite a lot of our life is, is intermingled. Um, and and I've, been, I've been thinking to myself, I, I recognise you when... The thing is, I, I don't... I mean, I, I do recognise you from when I were a member of the Flat Earth Society and, and I also recognise you from that rave in 1999 at the Natural History Museum. But it, it's something a little bit more and... Well, I was just wondering, um, <clears throat> what what were you doing in 1978? Uh, I think it was uh, May, around May the 20th, maybe? Uh, May 20th. Oh, that was the day I got my first accordion. Right, okay. Um, you, you didn't happen to get that accordion, did you, in Leeds? Um... Yes, I, I think Leeds Bradford. Is that, is that's in Le Leeds, right? <laughs> is that in Leeds, Ben? Uh, I don't really understand the question. Leeds and Bradford are two separate places. Oh, I've always heard it like Leeds Bradford. They're two distinct cities. Oh, yes, I had the same confusion, Rhys. Uh, you know what, it probably was Leeds. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> oh, uh, it's just... It's just... Right, well... Thing is, in, in 1978, I, I'd just become an intern uh, and an accordion manufacturer. Okay. Um, I have no idea where well, you're going with this. One of my first customers was a, a, a rather beautiful lady. Um, I distinctly remember because the thing is, uh, she, she bought an accordion and, and she dropped a necklace. Ah, uh, okay. Um, and I've, um, well, the thing is, the reason that I knew she dropped the necklace is we, uh, I, I, after I sold the accordion, she didn't really know how to play. Um, so, so I, I played the accordion and she sang a song for me. Um, and we, we, we then spent a delightful day out in Leeds and then Bradford. Yes, yes, I do remember that day. Um, and, well, do you mind I think it were you? I, you know what? 
You you had quite a different hairstyle back then. I mean, you had hair. So. Uh, yes, yeah, that's right. Yes, I'm sorry I, I didn't recognise you before. It, obviously, it's a long time oh, ago. The thing is, do you mind me? Right? I've still got that necklace. It, no. Do you remember it? Yes. It was, it was a big, big gold chain with a middle finger up, and <laughs> well, I've been carrying it around all these years. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes, I, that's mine. That's from my Victorian <laughs> ancestors. <laughs> Well, the thing is, do you mind me, right? I've got my accordion here now. Can we play oh. one last time, just like we did back then? I haven't sang in years, but you know what? Let's give it a go. Oh, this is genuinely delightful. I'll um, I'll go help you get your uh, your accordion now. Do you guys Chris. have a favourite song? Or, well, we like to sing a lot about what we saw that day. Okay. Um, I would ask you what you saw that day, but I suppose that would be a bit of a spoiler, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, this is, I mean, really so. We've, I mean, this is beautiful. Um, you, you can't you can't really see in the studio, but uh, but, uh, but Chris has just handed over that, that necklace um, back to Jemima that he's been holding on to for 40 years. And you know what? It still fits. Despite my jowls. If anything, the jowls make you even more beautiful, Jemima. Well, thank you very much, but I am a married woman. Well, okay, fair enough. But but one last time, a song about Leeds and Bradford. And all the sights we saw. Okay. Are you ready? I've got out. I've got out. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Okay. My singing voice is a little rough. I just... Okay. <clears throat> okay. Oh! We're standing outside Royal Amory's Museum. And what do we see? It's the Royal Amory's Museum. They've got armor. And royal armor. In fact, it's mostly... Royal armor and this Harewood house just up the street. It's a county house that's art filled and it has a bird garden. And that's only Leeds. Of course, this Bradford. We went to Brentford's Twin Valley Zoo. It's a compact, family-friendly zoo. And we went to Glenhurst Art Gallery of Brant. It's a gallery. Well, as I say, it's been a while. Well, no, that was fantastic. And I learned a lot. That was, a, yeah. That was really, that was, I mean, very, very emotional. You know, I just realised I was singing about Brantford's uh, in Canada, I, I got a bit confused. <laughs> so, that's okay. I, I'm sure it's been a while since you've been there. I, right. I mean, okay, sure. I mean, uh, did you? Uh, yeah. Okay. Obviously, you. <laughs> Have you been to Brantford? No. <laughs> All right. Well, I would like to okay. thank uh, our guest today, Jemima Pajima. Uh, that's quite all right. And uh, Chris Chris Diabetes, real name. That's all right. Yeah, it's um, it's been a pleasure. And Jemima, uh, maybe me, me and you could could connect. Um, you, you know, go out for coffee or something. You can bring along your husband. You know what? Why not? Um, you may know my husband. I think your friends on MySpace. His name's Tom. Uh, yeah, let's uh, connect on MySpace and then we can uh, try to plan something. Wonderful. Um, well, there you go. Uh, improv Radio. Not only do we do world exclusives, but we bring people back together. Yeah, we reignite old friendships. Fantastic. All right. Wonderful. Well, ah, uh, oh, you know what, Ben? We should get like a slogan for the end of this. We should, we should. We don't have one. All so right, for now, we'll, we'll just have to settle on... Uh, um, bye.
I'm go I'm gonna put my own in. Keep it real, bruv. All right. Cheers. Bye.